Today I want to talk to you about the evolution of dogs from wolves and how this could impact how we look after them and the relationship that we have with our pet dog. How similar are dogs and wolves? Is it really just a simple step for them to revert back to their ancestral origins or are the differences actually more than skin deep? <coughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Alex from rpetshealth.com where my aim is to help you and your pet live a healthier, happier life. So definitely consider subscribing if that is something that you're interested in. So first I want to discuss the evolution of dogs from wolves. You know, they really are very similar. They only differ by about 1 to 1 1.2% of their DNA and they can potentially interbreed as well. So what is the evolution? Why does this matter and how has this impacted our relationship? And then I want to move on to just talking about the similarities and differences between dogs and wolves and how this can impact how we actually look after our dogs. So to start with we need to go back in time um, and consider kind of when dogs evolved from wolves. And actually that's the first misconception. So it's, it's generally well understood and wrongly understood that dogs evolved from the wolf, but that's not strictly true. So between 20 and 40,000 years ago, the dog and the wolf split from a common ancestor and so they evolved separately. So the, the modern day wolf is very different from the ancestor that the dog originally evolved from. So that's the first difference. We also then need to think about how the dog evolved. So they went from uh, being on the edge of human camps, scavenging off scraps, and they moved then into the huts, into the households. Uh, they were hunting companions, they were used to um, farm stock, and they became the companion that they are today. But that's all happened in a really short time, and you're not wrong to think that that is a blink of an eye in the evolutionary sense of, of kind of the time scale. Um, really, it normally takes about a million years for a new species, a completely separate species, to emerge from the process of natural selection and evolution. But really that is then the kind of a, a thought of why there is a difference here, because dogs haven't undergone just a normal natural selection process, the normal kind of survival of the fittest as we think about it from a Darwinian sense of the, the term. They've actually been bred selectively by humans. So we think of this as like a, a kind of a super natural selection, if you like. So humans have meticulously chosen the desired char characteristics that they're looking for. So that's where we've got all these different breeds as well. So initially we were looking for a dog that was really good hunting companion. It would help us to hunt and catch our prey. That then moved on to farming livestock. It moved on to security and guard dogs and then companions and, and pets and, and, and all that kind of thing. So we have selectively bred from the very beginning for dogs with the desirable characteristics. And so that process is going to really supercharge the, the evolutionary process. Um, it's been shown by um, kind of actually studies that have been done in Russia on foxes where it started in 1959 to, to try and domesticate the wild fox. And it actually only took um, eight generations until they were exhibiting a lot of dog behavior. So they were wagging their tail, they were looking for affection, they were acknowledging and they were losing their fear of humans. By 20 generations, which is really not very much at all, they were kind of really very habituated and they were pretty much companion foxes. So that um, that is still ongoing, that experiment, but it's taken, you know, 60, 70 years to get to the stage where um, fo wild foxes have been effectively domesticated. So 20 to 40,000 years doesn't then sound like such a, a kind of short period of time for this kind of extreme evolution to take place and for significant differences to emerge between dogs and wolves. Let's talk about DNA next. So I've already said that dogs and wolves, they only differ by between about 0.8 and 1.2% of their DNA. That figure differs depending on where you're looking uh, and you know that's really not a very big difference. We need to think that maybe humans and chimps only differ by potentially about 4%. Again that kind of figure varies and our techniques to compare this are constantly changing but that also just goes to show that a, a relatively small difference in DNA can still make quite a big difference in actually the, the physiology and the appearance of the individual. As for dogs themselves within breeds they only differ by about 0.15% so all dogs are incredibly closely, closely linked but obviously those dogs that look more like wolves 
so like your huskies um, and that kind of breed are going to be more closely related to the wolf than our other breeds. And this DNA impact does make a difference with regards a wolf and a dog physiology and morphology when we compare them together. So wolves have got larger skulls, they've got larger, larger jaws compared to the same size dog. They've also got a bigger brain than the same size dog. Wolves are also better at problem solving, they're better at working independently, but also to working with within a team, so working with uh, another pack member to problem solve and come up with a solution by themselves. Dogs on the other hand, they're much more human led and they will very soon give up if the problem is too hard or they will look towards their human, so their owner in the majority of cases, to solve that problem for them. So dogs are much more reliant on humans than wolves are. Wolves will still work with humans um, if they're in that right environment, if they're raised by humans to start with, but they are much more independent and they don't naturally look for it, whereas that's hardwired into every single dog. Another difference is a difference in breeding season. So wolves, they will only mate and breed once a year and there is a very specific breeding season. It's um, in kind of early spring, it lasts for about six weeks and they'll only produce one litter of pups every year. Dogs on the other hand, they will generally come on come into season um, every six months, so twice a year, and that's not a set breeding season. That does vary between individuals. Some will be nine months, some will be 12 months. And then I wanted to talk about the differences with diet, as there are three key differences in the genome of dogs and wolves that make a massive impact in their ability to process food. So the first of these is that dogs have three key genes, and I'll leave their names on the screen, that all allow them to process starch, which wolves simply do not have. Next is that dogs contain between 4 and 30 copies of the gene for amylase in their DNA. Wolves, on the other hand, only have two copies of this gene. And that all means that dogs should be about 25, or amylase is about 25 times more active in the dog than the wolf. And amylase is a key, uh, key enzyme used in the breakdown and digestion of starches. And studies show that the result of this difference alone means that dogs should be about five times better at digesting starch than the wolf. And that's discounting all of the other changes that I've talked about. And then the final difference with regards diet is that although dogs and wolves contain, uh, their DNA contains the same amount of information for maltase, which is another enzyme that's used in the processing and digestion of starch, dogs actually produce a longer version of this enzyme than wolves do. And it's the same kind of version that's found in cows, it's found in rabbits, and also in um, rodents like the rat, who all clearly need to um, be able to process vegetable matter. So that's another example of just how the dog has evolved to, to consume our scraps, so our grains, our breads, um, and our plant-based, uh, kind of plant-based waste. So dogs really, have been selected, like I said at the very beginning, to kind of to live with us, to survive off our, our kind of discarded waste initially, but then our table scraps. And that's been reflected in their genetic, kind of their genetic makeup, which has made their intestines much more effective at processing grains, processing plant-based material, um, and able to be able to thrive off that rather than just being able to survive. So this all has an impact when it comes to what the best diet to feed your dog is. So there's a lot of information about there. There's a lot of people who swear blind that dogs should have a, uh, a kind of a biologically appropriate diet, they call it, or a prey related diet, where they're just fed um, kind of like raw meaty bones, you know, raw diet, raw food, and, and, and the same people will claim that grains are terrible, that wolves don't eat grains, dogs shouldn't be fed grains, they can't process them, but clearly that just isn't true. Now, raw diet feeding, there are some potential benefits, there are some potential risks that you definitely need to be aware of, but there are some you know, potential benefits and potential risks with whatever you feed, be that a cooked commercial tinned food or a kibble. So if you're interested in learning more about the comparison between raw and kibble, then make sure you check out the video that's just linked on the screen now. And until next time, I'm Dr. Alex, this is Our Pets Health, because they're family.